Hello and welcome to Templar Knight TV, broadcasting on YouTube and also available on the Templar Knight blog. You can also keep up to date on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Did a shadowy organisation called the Priory of Sion establish the Knights Templar for a secret purpose? Or were they simply a group of crusaders who wanted to protect pilgrims on the treacherous roads into Jerusalem? And news on my TV outing with Rob Riggle, former Saturday Night Live and Daily Show regular, in a quest for the Holy Grail. How the Knights Templar came into existence has been something of a mystery for the last 800 years, and it's a mystery that's grown, not diminished. So I want to tackle, first of all, a major conspiracy theory surrounding the formation of the Knights Templar, and to look at the facts. If you've read either The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail by Richard Lee, Michael Bajant and Henry Lincoln, or The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, you'll be familiar with the theory that the Knights Templar were formed by a shadowy organisation called the Priory of Sion. According to The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, Jesus was not a poor carpenter from Nazareth, but a Jewish noble of aristocratic birth who had children with Mary Magdalene. And these children were smuggled to the south of France into the care of the Jewish community there. Initially, the Catholic Church had a kind of pact with the bloodline of Jesus, but this broke down. And at some point, the church realised it had to snuff out the bloodline of Jesus in order to protect its temporal and spiritual power. In other words, the Catholic Church became the mortal enemies of the bloodline of Jesus. Between the 400s and 700s AD, France was ruled by the Merovingian dynasty. And this dynasty of kings was descended or intermingled with the bloodline of Jesus. However, at some point, the Merovingians were overthrown. Fast forward to around 1099 and the First Crusade was the capture of Jerusalem. And the first ruler of Jerusalem under Crusader control, Godfrey de Bouillon, allegedly establishes an organisation called the Priory of Sion. And part of its mission is to defend the descendants of the Merovingians, the bloodline of Jesus. The mission of the Priory of Sion from the outset has been to bring the Merovingians back to power, to establish a global sacral monarchy. And watch out for those of you who support Brexit, because apparently uh, the objective is to create a united Europe under Merovingian control. They'd even take control of Rome, of the Vatican, establishing this global monarchy. So how did the Knights Templar fit into all of this? Well, the theory runs that they were the military arm of the Priory of Sion, and that while they were in Jerusalem, they discovered the secrets of the bloodline of Jesus and the treachery of the church, including its destruction of the Merovingian dynasty. Holy Blood even says that while the Templars were in Jerusalem, they discovered the humanity of Jesus and the fact that he was married to Mary Magdalene and even had children. And with that knowledge, the potential even for a reconciliation between Christianity, Islam and Judaism. We're then told that there was some kind of bust up between the Knights Templar and the Priory of Sion around 1188. And the Templars, of course, eventually were destroyed. They were arrested, imprisoned, and the order was suppressed. But the Priory of Sion, it said, continued and had many illustrious members and Grand Masters. And these included Joan of Arc, Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton, and down into the 20th century, Jean Cocteau. So you may well ask, where is the evidence to support this theory? Well, the Holy Blood and Holy Grail point to a late 19th century, early 20th century priest in the French village of Rennes-le-Chateau, a priest called Beranger Saunier, who it's claimed found secret documents within a pillar in his church, a Visigothic pillar that dated back to the period after the collapse of the Roman Empire. One of the three authors of the Holy Blood, uh, Henry Lincoln, made three documentaries in the late 1970s as part of the BBC's Chronicles series, in which he talked about 
the discovery of this document as proof of the existence of this shadowy organisation, the Priory of Sion. These documentaries were made in the period leading up to the publication of the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail in 1982. By now, of course, you've recognised some links to the Da Vinci Code in all of this. For example, Saunière, the priest at Renla Chateau, is, of course, also a character in the Dan Brown novel. And the quintessentially English character of Lee Teabing in uh, the Da Vinci Code is basically a mix of Richard Lee's name and an anagram of Bajant. It would be very remiss of me not to mention that two out of the three authors of Holy Blood, Holy Grail ended up in litigation with Dan Brown over the Da Vinci Code, alleging breach of copyright. That litigation was unsuccessful, uh, though I do recommend that you download the High Court ruling, the judge's ruling, which you can uh, download on Google. It's incredibly informative uh, and, dare I say, it's even a good, fun read. Did the authors of the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, as it were, discover the existence themselves of the Priory of Sion in the late 70s, early 80s? Well, not exactly. They got their knowledge of the Priory of Sion from a group of French theorists in the 1950s, led by a man called Pierre Plantard, who claimed to have discovered the existence of the Priory of Sion. However, the evidence that they put forward for the existence of the Priory has since been proven to be completely forged. To go into all the arguments in favour and against the existence of the Priory of Sion would literally take me hours and YouTube doesn't let me do that. So there is a link below. Uh, go and have a look at this blog post where I put all the arguments in favour of the Priory of Sion and all the arguments against. Uh, and I think it's a pretty comprehensive look at those arguments if I don't say so myself. But that in a nutshell is the theory of the Priory of Sion. So that's the Priory of Sion theory about the origins of the Knights Templar. But we also have those 12th century chroniclers who are writing at the time. But, you know, you can't assume that they are dispassionate, objective observers of the Templars. Many of them are clerics and their attitudes really seem to have ranged from mildly suspicious to utterly hostile, except for St Bernard of Claveau, who was the Templars' cheerleader, uh, cheering them on, supporting them. But that wasn't the view of other chroniclers. One very prominent chronicler was William of Tyre, and he tells us that a group of French noblemen, led by a man called Hugh de Payne, approached the Christian Patriarch of Jerusalem, and they promised to live like regular canons, like, uh, like monks, if you want, uh, having no possessions, observing the vow of chastity, and protecting the roads into Jerusalem and the Holy Sepulchre. They were to be a new type of military order, less drinking and carousing, and more praying and tough drills. They got their name by being based on the Temple Mount, specifically the so-called Temple of Solomon. And in no time at all, really, in the years that followed being set up, they were showered with privileges by successive popes, including the right to wear their very distinctive uniform. But even though the accounts given by the chroniclers, which sometimes reads like the Robin Hood story, uh, even though there are big gaps in the story, there is no mention of a shadowy organisation called the Priory of Sion. Nevertheless, as you know, the Templars had a very steep rise and an equally precipitous fall. And of course, that story alone has given rise to a huge number of conspiracy theories from the time that they existed right up to the present day. Quick news flash then, I have been appearing in a new history series, Rob Riggle, Global Investigator, with former Saturday Night Live and Daily Show regular Rob Riggle. And we were investigating last year uh, a ruined abbey at a place called Kilwinning in Western Scotland to see if there was proof that the Knights Templar had ever been there. And Rob was very keen to see if he could find the Holy Grail. Well, now, Rob was very enthusiastic and I had to warn him off uh, smashing up a few things to see if he could find the grail. Um, I'm afraid, uh, well, 
I'm not going to tell you actually what happened. You'll have to watch to see whether or not we found the grail. It's a fascinating topic, isn't it? The origin of the Knights Templar. Now, I'm sure many of you have got theories and viewpoints. Please feel free to share them at the email appearing on the screen right now. I look forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, be good and non nobis domine.